I think of our drawing style as the natural rhythm of our drawing, the way things tend to look if we fairly unselfconsciously just draw. If we're not deliberately trying to manipulate or copy or echo a particular stylistic technique, but if we're simply drawing the way things tend to come out when we put the lines on paper ourselves. That's our natural drawing style. It's not something that's fixed, it simply is what is at that point. We certainly can choose to develop it and sometimes even tweak it in certain directions quite deliberately. They're all things I've done myself at different stages as my drawing style has developed. But the important thing in trying to address the question of why isn't my drawing style developing at all? Why does perhaps every drawing look like it was drawn by a different artist? We need to understand some of the places this natural drawing flow, our natural drawing style comes from. And I think it comes from four main areas, only one of which is actually to do with lines going onto paper. Let me explain. So I think in terms of four things that contribute to our style. And while I'm going to present them one, two, three, four, of course, they don't follow like that. They each connect with each other in various ways and in various order when we're drawing. But the first thing that develops our style is our observation. It's our ability to see what's in front of us, to see our reference, whether it's a photo, whether it's in real life, or if we're drawing something from imagination, to what degree we visualize it in our mind before we start. So this is where I see the detail. I see the objects. I see the various components that make up the scene, the different textures that are around. I see the patterns. I see the proportions. I see the tonal values. Careful observation is the starting point of anything we draw from a reference. And if we have a stronger sense, a clearer sense, a more exact and a more accurate sense of what we're drawing and how the various parts line up with each other, that will give us a stronger foundation for our drawing and the style we develop to draw it with. The second point is where we think, where we evaluate, where we start to make some choices and thoughts about what we're doing, how we're doing it, how long we're going to have to do it what materials we're going to use to represent it. There's a big difference between the exact style we might use for a 15 minute drawing. There is a big difference as we think about the various options available for us to represent a scene on paper. There's a big difference in the choices we make if we're doing a 15 minute drawing or a 90 minute drawing. And if we're using marker tone, as well as line. The size we do our drawing also matters. So as we're thinking about our overall drawing, having a sense of how large it will be will help us in our evaluation, our big picture map out of how we're going to represent it on paper. But now we get closer to actually putting lines onto paper. And our third point, I like to think of as translation work because we have an object. In this case, we're looking at this tree. And we have to represent this form, in my case, using this medium or this medium and this medium on paper. And while this print is already on paper, there's a detail and complexity here that is not practical, probably not possible for me to copy exactly. So in some way, to some degree, I need to translate this into a different language the language of line on paper that I use to translate this sort of object. And the choices I make will very clearly start to define my style. The fact that I don't do a solid line around the outside edge of the top of my tree a lot of the time is a stylistic technique of mine. The fact that I try very hard with large trees not to make any marks that look like they represent a leaf is a stylistic technique of mine. It's a translation that I use. The way I use these hatching lines to try and represent the parts of the tree canopy that are in shade and cast shadow 
is a stylistic technique of mine. And this is in fact the fourth area that defines our style. And that's the, if you like, the technical methods that we actually use in our translation. The lines, the marks, the tones, the inks, the colors, the way we put them on the paper, the way we combine them. If you like the individual words that make up the sentence of our translation. And while these marks on the paper, these technical technique driven parts of the drawing process are the most obvious in defining our style, they only appear the way they do because of how well we've observed our reference, because of how we've thought about it and the priorities we've made in our mind about what we're trying to capture, what we're trying to represent, and then how in our thinking we've planned to try and capture the effect of what we see and then the actual technical methods we use, we employ to put that on paper. It can be as simple as do I use a ruler for straight lines or do I draw them freehand? And that's a technique choice that I think has a huge impact on how our drawing style looks. And of course we do make different choices depending on what medium we're planning to use in our drawing. Because all of these lines, the technical ways of drawing that we're using flow from the way we observe, the way we think and the way we translate, there's going to be the unifying factor of our thinking, our thought processes, which will give a consistency. I'm going to tend to use similar methods of solving the same problem of representing form on paper. And so as I go through this process of observing, of thinking, of translation work in my mind, and then actually choosing some technical means, some technique focused ways of putting line or tone on paper to represent what I'm seeing, what I'm observing, filtered through those thought processes, I will tend to be using the same solutions to the problems that I face. And therefore my drawings will start to have a common look as my technique choices start to firm up and I start to settle on ones that I am happy with as solutions to the various issues faced in translating from one medium to another. So if I don't feel like I'm developing a consistent style, a consistent way my drawings look, the question is what's interrupting or short circuiting this process of observation, of thinking, of translation, and of actually putting pen on paper over and over and over again in drawing after drawing, where I can consistently modify, refine, improve the way I make my marks. What is it then that's shortcutting this process of thought, of translation, of actually drawing, and of a consistent improvement over time as I draw more and more? So let's look at a few possibilities of things that interfere with this process. And the first one, if I can put it bluntly, is impatience. It takes time to develop a drawing style. When we learn a language, it takes a lot of work, effort, time and mistakes before anything resembling a conversation happens. Why do we keep thinking that learning to draw is somehow less demanding than learning a language or learning the piano? Because when we make this assumption, we set ourselves up for discouragement and failing. This interconnectedness between careful observation, between thinking our thought processes, by working out how we're going to translate what we see into marks on paper, and then actually developing the skills and the methods, the techniques to put those marks on the paper, will take time to happen as we actually practice it. Which brings us to the second point, is it may not be happening because we're not doing enough drawing. Time itself won't help us create a drawing style, only if in that time we draw and we draw and we draw. I can watch videos on drawing all I like. I can study books on French all I like, but until I actually start to engage speaking French with French people, I'm never going to start to really develop the ability to speak in that language. Until I stop watching videos and actually start to draw, 
I'm not going to start to develop my drawing to develop my style. I have to draw consistently and frequently and it will probably take more time and more drawing than you think. And the third point, and this is possibly going to be the most applicable, the most significant for most people, is that I put my focus on point four, on developing the marks, the techniques for making the marks on the paper. And I don't actually appreciate or see the value of points one to three, of the careful observation, of the thinking, of the translating, what I'm seeing, what I'm wanting to do, how I'm going to put that onto the paper. I go, yeah, 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 and I grab the pen and I start putting marks on the paper before I really understand what I'm trying to draw and what I want my end result to be. By simply concentrating on the techniques for marks, on watching all those tips and hacks videos, I haven't developed the understanding I need to use them to know where to put them, to know how to put them, to know why I'm putting them. Because I haven't learnt to see what I need to see. I haven't thought about the things I've needed to learn to think about. And so if I'm rushing just to put marks on paper, is it any wonder that from one drawing to the next, or even within the one drawing, everything seems to ramble around quite randomly. This is what can happen when we've rushed to making marks without actually spending time working out why we're making them. We've lacked the unifying factor that would have brought together all the marks and created a recognizable drawing style. The fourth point's a quick one. It's an unhelpful focus on the particular drawing style of other artists, of our favorite artists, of the artists who've most inspired us. This is both very understandable, but also very unhelpful. Because when I look at another artist's artwork, I'm seeing the end result of their process of observation, of thinking, of working out how they're going to represent one form in another form of this translation process. But if I'm just trying to grab a little bit of this, of that, and paste it over the top of my drawing, then it's in the end going to look like that. It's going to look like I've pasted a little bit of someone else's technique onto my technique because it hasn't come from a natural place of understanding and development. The fifth point is related to the fourth point, and that's that if we consistently copy the work of other artists, that will not help us develop our own drawing style. I will develop my copying skills, but I won't develop the creativity I need to work out what lines I need to put and where I need to put them and what the best way to draw them will be. Of course, we can use the drawing techniques of other artists, and I've shown you some of my techniques when I draw trees, and I've got videos on lots of subjects where I explain in detail my techniques. But I hope I've done it in a way that you can understand what I'm doing and why I'm doing it, and then you can incorporate that into your own thinking, observation, and translating. So that my techniques aren't copied in your drawings, but my techniques end up informing the total flow of all the things that are informing your style in your drawing. And I've saved the most important point to last. I think the biggest thing that stops us developing our own drawing style is that we focus too much on getting a certain look in our drawings instead of focusing on trying to learn to draw well. We're more worried about the appearance than the substance. We want drawings that capture whatever we think the current on-trend look for whatever genre we're drawing in, instead of wanting to learn the whole package so that we can produce those end results. But the good thing is nothing will speed along the development of a consistent, natural drawing style for you, as much as not focusing on getting a certain look, but seeking to draw the very best drawings you can and then see how they look at the end. Let that interconnected flow develop and form and be your starting point. Concentrate on learning to do all the parts that make up a drawing. Concentrate on learning how do I observe because when I focus on drawing well, I'm going to focus on capturing likeness, on controlling my lines, on varying my lines, on accurate perspective, on dealing with various textures that are applicable to whatever genre of subject I like to have, whether it's animals or people or buildings. Understanding tonal values. 
hatching, cross hatching, composition, depth, proportions, scale, and so on. Because working on these aspects of drawing at every stage will involve my observation, will demand that I think and evaluate and learn to make the choices that are going to translate best what I'm wanting to achieve into marks. And then I will get practice at putting those marks on the paper. And then my style will just appear. And because my thinking processes, my observation all becomes consistent, the marks I end up choosing to put on the paper will start to become consistent and my style of drawing will become consistent. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. I hope this has been helpful, but whatever you draw, however you're drawing it, have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.